Those so are the four uh, contributions that we have scheduled for today. But we do have some time left. And if you have any questions for for any of the presenters, I'm sure we'll be happy to answer. I have one. Uh, you, you mentioned near peer role models. I'm not familiar with that. Could you um, look a little? A near peer is somebody who is similar in age, ethnicity, sometimes gender. And the research that I've done in Japan, and there's several articles I give you the references for, or you can just, if you put into Google near peer role modeling, you'll get several different articles. One, the top one now I think is from actually India, where they're doing it in medical education and teaching physiology whatever it is about your body. <laughs> uh, they are, the teachers are getting students to help each other. And they're calling it near peer role modeling. And they find that the students learn much better than if a teacher lectures. Okay? And so getting our students to interact, learning from each other, they learn a lot more. And that's near peer role modeling. And it's great as far as it goes. And we should use it in our classes. But then what my argument is for is to try and go to diversity modeling too. Because if you're too homogeneic, it's, it's boring and too much uh, bonding social capital, rather bridging social capital, where you can benefit from other people and other ideas. Could you mention shadowing as, as a, an easy step into that? Shadowing is a great step into that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's a great step into your girl or diversity modeling. You can put two different people together. Shadowing is just one student is reading uh, a passage, maybe. One student is other... reading a passage, maybe. And the other person, and the other person is shadowed. Is shadowed. <laughs> and if that other person is the same type of person, if the other person is the same type of person, then they learn a little bit. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's but if he's really strange, like he is, <laughs> strange like he is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you learn a lot more. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Good demonstration. Uh, I had a question for you also. I, I actually had just seen that uh, presentation in TED Talks a couple days ago. Uh -huh. um, could you come make, you've talked about the positive aspects of the mirror neurons, uh -huh. but do you have a comment on the negative ones? Like, by negative I mean when a teacher is like yelling at the students, mm -hmm. what are the mirror neurons doing? Well actually there's lots of research to show that the negative effects are huge as well. Right. With uh, violence, when people watch violent movies, they tend to be much more violent. Mm -hmm. When you see a, an action movie of somebody speeding <laughs> through the street and you go back get into your car, you're more apt to speed. Right. Uh, people who see people who are taking lots of drugs and smoking, they're more apt to smoke than take drugs. So it's, the good is the good and the bad. Thank you very much for mentioning this. Yeah. It's not all positive. Whatever you see, you simulate. I mean, I know a teacher who's swearing at his college students. Oh, ouch. And uh, obviously, mirror neurons would be yeah. involved, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just want to add an anecdote about your story with the two infants in the crib. Uh, Gorillas in the Mist. Okay, everyone knows yeah. Gorillas in the Mist. Is that good all? Or yeah, I think yeah. it's good all. Yeah. Um, they had a thing where they were saving orphaned baby uh, gorillas, and it was the same thing. If they could be with a human to hold them the first night, they survived. And if they were not held by a human the first night, most of them died. And it's that simple. So anyway, there's obviously some kind of empathy. Yeah, it has an effect. Yeah, that's interspecies empathy. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for any of the presenters? <coughs> okay. Sure, sure, yes, please do. Yeah, this uh, June and July, Tim and I are part of a group um, that's doing a couple of conferences in Japan on uh, ELT and neuroscience. And one of them is in, one of them is in Kikyushu, which is right next to uh, Fukuoka, which you can fly to directly from Busan. And the other is in Sendai, which you can fly to directly from Seoul. So if you're interested, uh, I have some flyers, and uh, they promise to be really interesting now. When, when is that? The, the June one is June uh, 23rd, 24th. That's going to be a one-day mini-conference, and then the people who want to are going off to a hot springs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and the 
second part is called up to your up to the on center, which is the Japanese word for hot springs, up to your next in neural, neural ELT. And then the one in uh, Fukuoka is July 14, 15, 16. Or, and that's a key to Kyushu, which is like 20 minutes for Fukuoka or something like that. Anyway, if you're interested. Another announcement? Well, we can plug about international. Yes, we can. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Phil Owen. I'm the chair for the international conference in October, um, at which both Tim and Mark have spoken several times, although not this year, unfortunately. <laughs> Next year. Another year. <coughs> I'd just like to encourage you uh, to plan to come, but also encourage you to submit a uh, proposal. We are still accepting proposals. Uh, you can find that link at uh, koreatsalt.org down to the international conference link, and, and it's, it's an online form to submit, uh, to, to, to present all kinds of presentations, research-based, um, uh, practical classroom-based stuff. Uh, we'd love to see some more. Okay. Thank you. So is, there, is there a deadline for the... Uh, uh, the deadline is the 31st. Uh, okay. 31st of May, but we'll probably slip that a couple of days. Not too long. All right? Don't tell anybody yet. <laughs> yes. The 20th and 21st of October in Seoul. And if you would like to help work on the conference committee, you can see me. We have lots of space. Twentieth and twenty-first. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Thank you, Professor Helgeson. Thank you, Gordon. And I thank all of you for coming to the presentation.